Hey there, congrats on your purchase of the Wicked Edge Convex Edge Creation Kit or the Wicked Edge Ultimate Convex Kit. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to put a convex edge on a blade or how to maintain an existing convex edge. Also, I'll walk you through some tips and tricks, best practices, and how to get the best results out of your convex edge kit. Now, to begin, we're going to start with putting a convex edge on a blade or starting with the convex creation kit. So this kit is going to come with two blank handles with coarse and fine sides, as well as pre-installed rubber strips on them, two sheets of diamond lapping film, a 15 and a 30 micron, and a lighted jeweler's loop, which is really important, and you'll see why later. Additionally, you're gonna want some other supplies. So, Sharpie for checking your angles, some rubbing alcohol, I like to keep mine in a spray bottle, but whatever works for you, some paper towels for cleaning, and your highest grit diamond stones that you have. Additionally, you will obviously need a Wicked Edge sharpener. Doesn't matter which sharpener model you have, the process will be identical across all of them, just bearing in mind the slight differences between sharpeners. And last but not least, you're gonna need a blade that you want to put a durable convex edge on. Now, the first order of business is going to be applying the lapping films to these rubber strips. So I've already peeled my lapping films off, and I wanna make sure that I'm putting the coarse on the coarse side and the fine on the fine side. So the green, the 30 micron, I'm putting on the coarse side. Now I'm going to just align this up with my rubber strip and press it down on there. I'm gonna repeat the process on all of the other three rubber strips with the appropriate grit lapping film. Now, once you've applied your lapping films to the appropriate side of these handles, it's time to start talking about your blade and blade angles. Now, a little note before that, it is important that you've already sharpened this blade to a V-grind on the Wicked Edge system, as this system will tolerate no irregularities in the bevel. Now, most factory knives are going to have some irregularities down the length of the blade, and these will become more apparent once you start putting a convex edge on a blade. So again, it's important that you've already sharpened this blade to a V-grind on a Wicked Edge. So we're going to use our fine grit diamond stones to find our angle and sweet spot for this blade if you don't have it already recorded. If you need a little refresher on how to do that, check out the link in the description. It'll walk you through that process. Now, I've clamped this blade in its sweet spot and already found the angle for it. But it's really important to note that when I put a convex edge on a blade, it's going to add about two degrees to the final edge angle, meaning that this blade has a V-grind on it at 19 degrees. This means that when I'm finished putting a convex edge on it, it, the edge angle will be about 21 degrees. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. This is really important if you want a very specific end edge angle. So if I wanted an end edge angle of 20 degrees, I would need to reprofile my blade at a V-grind to be 18 degrees, two degrees below what I want my final convex edge angle to be. So now in practice, when I have a 19 degree V-ground angle and I wanna start putting a convex edge on it, I am going to raise my angle by one degree on both sides. This means my angle is going to be set at 20 degrees. Next, I'm going to take my handles and making sure the coarse side is on the inside, slide them onto my guide. Now, another really important thing before we start actually putting this convex edge on is we want to be cleaning off our blade, making sure there's no debris, any kind of residue on it, as these lapping films have very small grain size on them and we want to keep them as clear as possible. So I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and my paper towel and clean off the edge of that blade as well as I can using a safe upward motion. Now, when we're actually sharpening, it's gonna be very important that we grab these handles up at the top and sharpen in an upward motion like so. If you use the standard down and forward sharpening motion, you will slice open the slapping film and render it unusable. It is really important that you grab up at the top to prevent any scratching on the actual body of your blade. So make sure that you're holding up at the top. Now, I want to be pressing into my blade just enough to make sure that that rubber is deforming a little bit along the edge. This is what's gonna actually create the convexing. And I'd like to make a comparison to how hard I press when I strop. A little bit harder than when I normally sharpen with diamond stones. Now, one very important thing to think about is how much pressure you're actually putting into this with both of your hands. If you're using more pressure on one side, it will become apparent when you put a convex edge on a blade. So, I have a dominant hand, right? and I'm gonna just pay a little extra attention to 
putting enough pressure on with my non-dominant hand to match that dominant hand so I don't get uneven bevels. Now I'm going to make about 20 passes down the length of the blade, so going in sections, and a full pass, counting the length of the blade. And this will be about 20 strokes, but, you know, measure with your heart. Now, once I've done those 20 or so strokes, I'm going to pause, get my paper towel and alcohol again, and clean off my blade. Again, going upwards so I don't slice my finger off. I'm also going to take this paper towel and wipe off my lapping films as they build up a ton of debris that really slows this process down. So once I've done that, I'm going to take my loop, turn it on, and examine my bevel. I will probably see some scratches still in the center of that bevel and shinier parts along the shoulder and the very edge. This is exactly what we want to expect. But if you're not seeing this just yet, that's totally fine. This is really dependent on how hard your blade steel is and how much pressure you're putting into your strops. Now, like I said, whether or not you're gonna start seeing these scratches in the middle and shininess along the shoulder and the edge is gonna be really dependent on how much pressure you're putting in. So if you're not seeing anything, don't worry. Continue with your strop lapping, do another 20 or so passes, and then pause again, clean off blade and strops, and check with your loop. In addition for looking for the removal of those scratches from the center of your bevel, one other thing when looking through the loop that can help you identify when you're actually getting a convex edge is that when you put the loop on your actual bevel and you rock it back and forth just a little bit, you should see a light reflecting from that bevel in a really nice, smooth, sort of soft-edged way that will allow you to know that that bevel is in fact curved, i.e. convex. Now, it may take several passes and repeating this process a couple times so you get to a point where all of those scratches down the length of the blade are being removed in the middle of the bevel. But when you're seeing a uniform, scratchless bevel, then we can move up to our next grid of lapping film, in this case, the 15. Now, a little pro tip. If you feel like this process is taking longer than it ought to, there's a good chance that you need to clean your lapping films off more. So, again, just spray paper towel with alcohol and wipe them down. Now, another pro tip, if this doesn't feel like it's quite cutting it, is to use a lapping fluid of some sort. Now, these are sold online, but a really great extra pro tip is to just use Windex. That's what I have in this little bottle. So I'm gonna put a couple of drops on this, on each lapping film, and what this does is it helps remove sharpening debris from my actual sharpening stone, in this case, my lapping film. This really helps in the convexing process and makes it go much faster. Now, once I've moved on to my 15 micron, I'm gonna repeat this exact same process, doing about 20 strokes down the length of the blade and then checking with my loop after having cleaned my bevel off to see that those scratches are again being removed down the middle of the bevel. Once they're all gone, I now have a convex edge on my blade and it's ready to use. Now, if you already have a convex edge on your blade and you would like to maintain it, first we need to determine whether or not this edge was put on on a Wicked Edge system. If it was, simply return your settings to what they were when you convexed it originally and do 15 to 20 passes with your finest grit lapping film that you finished with last time. This should renew the edge and bring it right back to life while maintaining that convex. If the convex on your blade came from the factory like that and was not put on there on a Wicked Edge system, then that means you're going to need to reprofile your blade to a V-grind and then put a convex on afterwards. This is because every single factory grind is going to have inconsistencies in it, something that our system does not tolerate. If you put a convex edge on something that has that factory grind on it that has never been sharpened on the Wicked Edge system, you're likely to see those inconsistencies come out further, leaving you with an unsightly bevel. Now, if you purchased the Convex Ultimate Kit, you're going to get the things that came with the Convex Creation Kit, namely the 30 and the 15 micron lapping films, pair of handles, and your jeweler's loop. But you're also going to get the tools to take your Convex Edge to a much higher polish. 
namely two more sets of handles and nine, six, three, and one micron lapping films. Now, in order to make use of these extra resources, you're just going to continue with your grip progression, going numerically smaller, as micron sizes do as they get smaller and smaller, and it's the exact same process as you used in your convex creation. So you're going to, with a lapping film, go until you remove all of the scratches down the center of that bevel from the previous grid. Then you're going to clean your blade off really well and move on to your next smallest grid. This will leave you with a really beautiful mirror polished edge by the time you get all the way to that one micron. Enjoy your extra durable edge and don't hesitate to reach out with any questions.